Hi everyone and welcome to the flipped recording for 3.04 rates of chemical reactions. Don't forget to take notes during this recording in your science notebook and remember to update your slide with the lesson number and title. Hopefully you can see up here at the top and you can remember to update 3.04 um, rates of chemical reactions. Remember, you need all the guiding questions here, answers there, and your actual notes that you take um, over here. So remember, the more words that are relevant to the content, the better, and I will guide you through that as we go. So once we get into the lesson here, <clears throat> We're talking about rates of chemical reactions. So how fast does a chemical reaction take place? A second, a minute, an hour? How can you speed up a reaction? How can you slow down a reaction? You will explore these questions in this lesson. The rate of a chemical reaction depends on several factors, such as temperature and concentration of reactants, the amount of a substance involved relative to the other substances present, and the presence of a substance called a catalyst may change the energy needed for a reaction to occur. You will learn about chemical reactions and look at graphs that show what happens during this process. So right off the bat, some important things to put in your notes are this. <clears throat> what factors affect the rate of a chemical reaction? I would put that and I would put temperature, concentration of reactants, amount of substances involved and the presence of a substance or the presence of a catalyst okay <clears throat> and we'll talk more about those as we go through the lesson so let's take a look at our keywords first you need catalyst this is a substance present during a chemical reaction that speeds up the reaction those are your key words to know about catalyst it is not used up or changed during the reaction. Equilibrium. So the word that you can pull out of this is equal. And this is the state of a chemical reaction in which the rates of the forward and reverse reactions are equal. Okay, so this part up here might be confusing, but you're seeing the word equal here and you're seeing it somewhat the same here. So remember, if the rates are equal, okay, even though you may not understand what forward and reverse mean yet, um, you'll know that the reaction has reached equilibrium. The reaction rate, how quickly a specific chemical reaction occurs under specific conditions over time. So those are our keywords. And let's take a look at our guiding questions. The first thing we're going to be looking at together is um, when you put magnesium into hydrochloric acid solution, what reaction occurs? So it looks like that's going to be pretty specific. All right, so chemical reactions. The reaction of magnesium with hydrochloric acid is shown to the right. When you put magnesium into a hydrochloric acid solution, the following reaction occurs. So you can see magnesium, it shows that it's a solid, that's what the S means, plus two HCl, that means we have two molecules of hydrochloric acid. It's a liquid, this means it yields, okay, um, magnesium chloride. This shows AQ, means aqueous, like a liquid solution and um, plus H2G, this is not grams in this situation, it means a gas, so it forms a gas. So if we look at what happens when you add hydrochloric acid, you're adding the magnesium metal, you get hydrogen gas bubbles, okay? So it's breaking that down, magnesium plus hydrochloric acid gives you magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. 
Okay. So that answers number one, when you put magnesium into um, hydrochloric acid, what reaction occurs? So next, what is a reaction rate? We already defined that, but um, the magnesium and the hydrochloric acid react quickly when they come into contact. How fast did the reaction happen? A second, a fraction of a second? So a chemical reaction is not instantaneous, even if it seems that way. Even an explosion takes place over time. So all chemical reactions are processes that take place during a period of time. Okay, so um, what is a reaction rate? We just defined that, but here it is as well. That's number two. It's the speed of a reaction under specific conditions. These specific conditions may be a particular temperature, such as 100 degrees Celsius, and you can determine the rate in several ways. So you could see how long it takes for a certain amount of magnesium to be consumed. You could also determine how long it takes for a certain amount of magnesium chloride to be formed. And you could determine the reaction rate by figuring out how much of the reactant is used up over a period of time or how much product is formed over a period of time. The reaction rate is equal to the quantity measured divided by time. So what factors determine the rate of a chemical reaction would be, um, we're talking about the things that we found in here, how much of the reactant is used over a period of time, that, that's a factor that goes into it, how much product is formed over a period of time, so you're looking at quantity measured divided by time. So that last sentence there, the reaction rate is equal to the quantity measured divided by time. I would put that in your notes as well. So if we play the reaction over here and consider the reaction rate that you observe. So let's do that. Kind of see if you notice something happening fast. So for the reaction shown here, about 0.12 grams of magnesium is converted to magnesium chloride every second. This is the reaction rate for this example. So what are the units of um, the reaction rate of the formation of magnesium chloride? So what are the units that we're looking at? So the units are grams of um, magnesium chloride per second, so you have grams of magnesium chloride per, remember that little backslash S is a second, grams per second. Okay, the next question that we're looking for in our guiding questions is the catalyst question. Okay, and then this was factors that determine the rate of the chemical reaction. This is number three, and we talked about um, how, have you ever cooked an egg in a frying pan? So if you turn up the heat, the egg cooks faster. If you turn the heat down, the egg cooks slower. So temperature is one factor that affects the rate of a chemical reaction. So factors that determine reaction rates are these. And remember, we kind of wrote those down a while ago. Temperature, and I would write all of this out. Higher the temperature, faster the rate. Concentration. The more concentration or the more concentrated the reactant, the faster the reaction rate happens. Surface area. So when a reaction involves solids, an increased surface area will result in an increased reaction rate. And then catalyst. The presence of a catalyst speeds up a reaction rate. So see how the temperature and surface area affect the reaction rate. So if we take a look at this example, okay, you've got um, a couple of different things happening here. So in this image, we've got some very small pieces being added. Okay, at 25 degrees Celsius. And the reaction at 25 degrees Celsius mostly completed in 3.2 seconds. So the reaction, and this slide, it kind of jumbles everything together, but you can see that down here. 
Okay, if we move on to this one, temperature affects the reaction rate. So the lower the temperature, often the slower the reaction will be. The higher the temperature, the faster the reaction. Okay, so you can see this one is 45 degrees Celsius, 25 degrees Celsius, and zero degrees Celsius. Okay, so you can see like if something's dissolving in here, that the warmer water, the faster it dissolved. Okay, so um, we used to have a lab that we did with this and some Alka-Seltzer tablets. That was a lot of fun. You would increase the surface area and the temperature of the water and you could actually test this on your own. So that may be something we can add in to the content so you can try it at home if you would like. The next one is the surface area. And so when you're talking about surface area, it may be hard to understand what that means. Um, so the surface area is the amount exposed. So the amount of a substance. If you think about, you may not know what an Alka-Seltzer tablet looks like, but you probably know, um, for instance, what sweet tart candies look like. Um, so if you can imagine in this example that these are sweet tarts, Okay, just put into an amount of water. And remember, our water amount would be the same for all of these. Um, and they're whole here. For the medium surface area, let's say we want to increase our surface area a little bit. So we broke each one of those in half and we put them in here. So we've increased our surface area because that means more is exposed, right? And then the larger surface area. So let's say we crumbled up all those sweet tarts into tiny pieces like this. Okay, so that means a lot of surface is exposed, right? We have crushed up and opened up and so a lot of the surface is um, exposed. So if we watch, you can see the more surface area, the faster it dissolves here. So the faster the rate of reaction, the more surface area. So think about if you are cooking meat in a pan on your stove and you have like some hamburger meat and you know how it comes in the rectangle from the grocery store. If you start to break that apart while it's cooking, you're increasing the surface area. And so it cooks faster, right? Otherwise the outside gets really brown and the inside stays pink. So that's another way to think about increasing surface area. You're breaking it apart so more pieces are exposed to the heat. Same kind of idea here. Okay, so that's the three different things we saw. Surface area, temperature, and um, this just shows the reaction at 25 degrees Celsius. Okay, so moving on, factors that determine the rate of reaction. So we've written all of those down. Um, we're talking now about using the reaction of magnesium and hydrochloric acid to form magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas to illustrate the first three factors that affect reaction rate. Remember that the S is solid, the L is liquid, the AQ is a water solution, and the G is a gas. Play the four animations to see how the rate of the reaction is affected by these conditions. So number one is a reaction at room temperature. Two is a higher temperature. Three it was an increased concentration of hydrochloric acid. And four, we're gonna see a reaction of magnesium is broken down into smaller pieces with more surface area. So see how the temperature and the surface area affect the reaction rate. All right, so here we've got a temperature of 25 degrees. We're adding in the magnesium to the hydrochloric acid. Okay, and you can see that reaction. It didn't really show us on a timer. So next, it's gonna be 50 degrees. So we're warming it up and we're doing the same thing. And so just watching the bubbles, see if you can tell that the reaction happens a little faster and we see these hydrogen gas bubbles. Okay, next we're showing 
the words are hidden by the little timer down here. So we're seeing the reaction of magnesium metal with hydrochloric acid using a higher concentration of hydrochloric acid. So you saw there that the hydrochloric acid was stronger. And so that sped up the reaction rate. And then finally, we are looking here at um, using smaller pieces of magnesium. So we're increasing the surface level. And so you're able to see that as well. All right, so now we're talking about a catalyst. This is number four in your guiding questions. A catalyst is an added substance that speeds up the reaction but is not used up by the reaction. It works by lowering the activation energy of the reaction. Molecules need a certain amount of energy to break existing bonds and form new ones. The activation energy is the minimum amount of energy needed for the reaction to take place. Adding a catalyst can result in lower energy activation, which means that the reaction will happen more quickly. Now, what might happen to the rate of a reaction if you add a catalyst? So if you add a chemical um, vanadium oxide, so the V2O5, to this SO2 plus O2 reaction, so that's sulfur and oxygen, and then you're adding O2 gas, this is what happens. Okay, so you're able to see in a graph format that when you add the catalyst, Okay, you're able to see that the reaction rate goes up and then with the catalyst um, progress it shows you can see that it, it happens a little faster okay so if we go back and restart it okay you can see it needed much more energy and then with the catalyst it sped up the reaction without using as much energy. So in this um, reaction, the catalyst, this V2O5, vanadium oxide, is not used up, so it's written above the arrow. So above the arrow here. So that's where it's showing it's not used up. And you can watch how the um, chemical reaction changes. We did that part. All right, so factors that determine the rate of reaction. So we talked about number four, catalysts. They speed up a reaction. They aren't used up, but they um, can change the energy required. So you can get that from that last slide and answer that question. And then there are four factors that can change the rate of a chemical reaction. We've talked about those several times. Now we're gonna review how each one affects the rate of reaction along with an example. So temperature we've talked about. So increasing the concentration of reactants leads to more frequent collisions between reactants. More frequent collisions lead to more rapid reactions. Concentration. So if you increase the concentration of the reactant, it leads to more frequent collisions between reactants, and that speeds up the reaction. Surface area, when reactants are in different phases, the surface area is the two, or between the two, is the only place the reaction can occur. So if you increase the surface area, you'll increase the rate of the reaction. And then a catalyst making, um, it makes a reaction occur faster by lowering the initial energy it takes to start the reaction. All right, so we're going on to equilibrium. This is your last guiding question. Um, an equilibrium for the formation of hydrogen iodide. So you have hydrogen, H2. Iodide is I2. It yields two molecules of hydrogen iodide. So um, in all of the reactions you have seen so far, the assumption has been that reactants react to form products. However, this doesn't always happen. Sometimes the reaction can proceed backwards. A more accurate way to describe this reaction is, basically it's showing that this hydrogen and iodine, and then you can see this little symbol here. 
So it's kind of a different thing than we've seen yields in this hydrogen iodide. So this reaction has half arrows pointing to the right and to the left. This indicates that the reaction occurs in both directions, forward and reverse. So the reactants H2 and I2 react to form products. And then also the products react to form the reactants again. So um, you can kind of look at that symbol. You may want to write down this example for equilibrium so that you'll know what that symbol means if you see it again. And then you also want to include in your notes that um, that's how the forward and reverse, remember we saw that earlier, we're not really sure maybe what that meant. So now you're able to understand that the reactants form the products and the products form the reactants. So all of that would be helpful to put in your notes. So when a reversible reaction is finished, we say that the products and the reactants have reached equilibrium. So you may also want to write out to the side that that is called a reversible reaction. Equilibrium is the state of a chemical system in which the rates of the forward and reverse reactions are equal. At equilibrium, the amount of products and reactants stays constant. So when a reactant has reached equilibrium, has the reaction stopped? And it shows the answer, no, the reactant continues to form products. And then the products continue to form reactants. So the rate of these is equal. All right, so here is a practice activity that helps you um, kind of go through those four things again that we talked about and practice to seeing words um, familiar and being able to kind of sort those things out. So I encourage you to go do that and just test your knowledge. Add anything that you don't get to your notes. All right, and then from there, we'll go take a look at the lesson review. Um, so the rate of reaction shows how fast the reaction takes place. There are several factors that can affect the reaction rate. To determine how something will affect the reaction rate, think about it on the particle level. So answer the following questions to explain how various factors affect reaction rate. How does an increase in temperature affect the reaction rate? So it increases the speed of the particles, which means the particles hit each other more frequently with greater force, so that increases the reaction rate. How does grinding up the reactant affect the reaction rate? So think about that sweet tart example and that surface area. Grinding up reactant decreases the particle size, which increases the surface area available for the particles to react. This increases reaction rate. How does decreasing the concentration of reactants affect the reaction rate? So decreasing the concentration means that there are fewer reactants to react with each other so they collide less frequently, this would decrease the reaction rate. All right, so after you finish that up, make sure you update your slide with everything that we talked about in this lesson. And then you can check your sessions for the flipped follow-up. Um, come to Help Lab if you need any extra help, and have a great day.